Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're looking at the 15% recoil decrease that BSG have applied across the board to every gun in a surprise update over the weekend, which might have a massive impact on opening out the meta for the best weapons in patch 13. What this change has specifically done is to reduce the vertical recoil stat of every gun by 15% on the base stats of each weapon. This is the recoil that you see if you pull up an individual weapon in the modding screen and remove all of the mods and all of the attachments so that all you're left with is the lower or whatever fundamental core part of the gun is determined to be in Tarkov. For example, with the M4, this used to be 139, but is now 119. The broad ramification of this change is fairly simple, in that every gun build that you have used recently now has 15% less recoil because weapon attachments use the base recoil to determine how much benefit they provide. Naturally, despite all weapons benefiting from this change, this affects meta and minimum recoil weapons the least, and weapons with higher recoil more, simply because it's a percentage. The more recoil it had before, the more it loses with this update. Looking a bit deeper, however, there's more nuance to this than first meets the eye. Back when 12.12 was released and a flat amount of recoil was added to every gun, we saw that high fire rate weapons like the M4, the HK416 and the VSS got disproportionately hurt. On the other hand, low RPM weapons became dominant such as the UMP, the AK101 and the Mutant. This is because the vertical recoil stat itself determines specifically the amount that the muzzle climbs when a shot is fired. Once this happens, there is a force that tries to recenter the weapon. You can think of this a bit like an elastic band attached to the end of the gun, pulling it back down again. Even though the vertical recoil stat might be low on some weapons, like the M4 can get to, the speed at which it fires bullets overwhelms the returning force, and hence you get a lot more practical recoil on full auto than other guns that fire fewer shots in the same time period. It's for this reason that removing 15% of the recoil from every bullet should also have a much greater effect on weapons with fast fire rates, because the cumulative effect of the recoil is what made these feel bad in the first place. For assault rifles, the VSS and VAL with 900 RPM, the HK416 with 850 and the M4 with 800 should all feel materially better on full auto at every modding price point. SMGs too should also benefit from this, especially those with somewhat decent kick like the MP7 with 950 RPM. The A2 version with an SE5 foregrip and suppressor now comes to 33 vertical recoil and feels quite a bit easier to control, like the MP7 needed a buff, right? There are many guns in this category though that should feel pretty good like the MP9N, both of the Vectors and even the lowly Leg Slayer the PPSH with its 1000 RPM. SMGs overall tend to have pretty high fire rates, so broadly speaking this category is a net winner. There are two more types of weapons that this should help with, the next being high recoil single shot guns. With these weapons, you're often losing sight picture when you shoot, which can be really off-putting, and taking 15% less recoil on these is a huge deal. The SVD, for example, has a base recoil now of 289, down from 340, and the minimum recoil build can now get to 69 recoil, which really is getting there. The RFB is now 148 base, down from 173, and with some sensible mods such as the Thunder Beast Suppressor Combo and a Cobra Grip comes to just over 100 recoil, which would have been 120 previously. Shotguns also fall into this category as well, like the semi-autos, the 153 and the 155. The RFB is in fact the perfect segue into the final category, mid-tier and budget weapons that can't be modded any lower. Previously, it wasn't even possible to get the RFB to lower than 109 due to the limited modding, but now that it can get to 93 minimum in theory, this allows us to achieve recoil levels that were simply inaccessible previously. The same goes for the MDR. This is strong in the mid-game because once you have access to some decent ammunition for 5.56, you hardly have to spend any money modding the weapon, but because of the lack of replaceable stocks and barrels, this has always limited its overall potential. After the buffs, even with a relatively standard foregrip and muzzle combo, we can get this recoil to 52, which is very solid considering its price point around 55k. In theory, you can get it down to 47. The same here goes for the SCAR L2, and maybe weapons like the AUG, but we do have to remember for the AUG specifically that horizontal recoil has not been changed in this update as it is inherent to each weapon, and so those that feel bouncy left to right before will continue to do so. Overall, I think this is a good change simply because it is bringing down the range of recoils between the best and the worst weapons. Although Tarkov is meant to have RPG elements and a feeling of progression, the stock guns in many cases felt practically unusable and did really need some tweaking. Although we will certainly have some complaints around around laser beam meta, I do think that this change is a step in the right direction. So come and check out the stream here on YouTube if you're watching this video early. Otherwise, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.